So my mom used to use this expression. Maybe your mom did too. She would sit there and say, kids, now don't get too big for your britches, which I think is this funny way of telling me and my siblings to just guard our egos, to find ourselves, uh, to stay humble, to not get too big for our britches. Just in the past month, I uh, was scrolling through my phone and I saw that this preacher, this preacher that I admire greatly, a man who went and started a brand new church with just 50 people and within just a few short years, ended up with 5,000 people at his church. A man who, when I listened to the sermons, I could hear the voice of God coming through his voice. I, I think this preacher just got too big for his britches. He got exposed um, for doing some inappropriate texting and, and, and then some real aggressiveness towards the female members of his staff. And he was called out for using some of the church discretionary funds to, to do some hush money, as well as to ask people to sign NDAs as they left the church staff. And all of this, when it came to light, uh, this preacher, he fell from his position. Most of the staff left the church and then most of the parishioners left the church just in general. And what's interesting, when I look at that story, I think, oh my gosh, this isn't new at all. He's not even close to the only one that got too big for his britches. You see, if we look at the church, church after church after church, mega church leader after mega church leader, even small church leaders, leader after leader, they got too big for their britches. They got too uh, uh, invested in their own ego that... Um, that they fall, that they fall and then they take the church sort of with them. You see, I don't think that this is true just for church, but I think this happens in the secular world too. But I think when for church, we kind of expect it to be, we expect religious leaders to do something different, to, to do something different with a, a different standard. You see, I think often uh, we wreck ourselves when it comes to success. We find a level of success and then we find a way to just destroy it on top of us. Now, the second chapter of uh, 1 Corinthians, Paul talks about how easy it is to forget that our successes, that our gifts, that our opportunities, that they don't come from our own hustle or our own abilities, but all of our successes, our gifts, our opportunities, they come from God. That sometimes when we're waiting for something to happen, we want God to do something kind of big in our lives. Instead, uh, sometimes we're not achieving the level of success that we would like. There might be there might be a spiritual reason behind it. There might be a spiritual reason behind the waiting, behind the discernment. So maybe we don't get too big for our britches. You see, sometimes I, I think it's hard for us if we're really, really honest. It's hard for us to know if we're doing something for our own ego's purpose or if God's inviting us into sort of God's work in the world. So this is what Paul is teasing out in this chapter. Paul is encouraging people. Paul is encouraging us to slow down and seek what he calls the true wisdom of God, to really discern if what we are doing is God's will or if it's an act of our own ego. Uh, as people, you see, I think often we want to plow away ahead for ourselves, make something of our lives. But when you read the Bible, most of the time, the Holy Spirit is asking people to slow that train down, to slow things down. And then when the Holy Spirit invites them into something, it's usually something that they don't even want to do in the first place. So that maybe it's not an act of the ego. Maybe it's an act of the Holy Spirit. So we don't get too big for our britches, but instead we humbly accept the journey that God wants to take us on. And instead we remember that we're the clay and we're not the potter. So as you read chapter two, I've got a couple questions for you. Number one, when's the time in your life that you got too big for your britches? Uh, what happened then? And number two, uh, where in your life do you need help from the Holy Spirit? Where are you currently sort of finding yourself discerning right now? And what does that look like for you?